Good evening to everyone and uh, welcome to this webinar about pre-implantation genetic testing organized by IBF Life Group. Let's wait until everyone comes. Meanwhile, I will present myself. My name is Dr. Maria Calomarde. I am a gynecologist spe specialized in assisted reproduction in IBF Spain, clinic in Madrid. Today, we are going to talk about pre-implantation genetic testing, a very used technology in Spain, and in particular in our facilities. I will try to explain you how it works and the advantage of it, okay? And after the presentation, uh, there will be a section for, for questions and you may leave your doubts in the chat during the, the presentation. They will be answered at the end of it, okay? Let's get started then. So, uh, PTDR, what, what is it? According to its definition, pre-implantational pre genetic testing, from now on it's PGTA, okay, is a test which studies the genetic material of an embryo uh, before the transfer to the maternal uterus. In, order, in other words, looking inside the DNA of the embryos, it tries to discard any an, an aneuploidy, which means the presence of an abnormal number of chromosomes in a cell. For example, a human cell uh, having 45 or 47 chromosomes instead of the usual, at least 46. After this study, and once checked that the embryo is healthy at the uh, at that genetic, uh, genetic level, the woman will be prepared for the transfer into the uterus. To clarify, the objective of this test is to difference aeoploid embryos, healthy ones, and those unemployed with a genetic issue. So why do we need to do this test? In order to understand the benefits and advantages of the, of the PGTR test, we have to know what is needed to obtain an, an implantation and an, uh, an ongoing pregnancy. First of all, both a good quality and a genetically healthy embryo are essentials, essential since the quality of the embryo is the most important part to get a successful treatment. However, it is not the only part involved since a preparation and an optimal endometrium status are also required. If one of these conditions is missing, pregnancy is not going to happen. Therefore, PGTA is the only way of getting to know the embryogenetic before the transfer to the uterus. Of course, the genetic diagnosis is not mandatory um, and the embryos can be selected according to its morphology, as, as you know. Although the embryo seems to be perfect, we will not be able to know if it has a genetic issue without that test. So IBF Spain is a, is a fertility clinic uh, that always try to design an uh, accurate protocol to obtain a friendly pregnancy in the metrium and to select the best embryo to be transferred. Okay, however, we do recommend analyzing the quality and the genetic of the embryos to avoid future issues such as miscarriage or negative pregnancy tests during the treatment. This way, the possibilities of a successful results will be increased, okay? Therefore, PGTI is used to obtain a pregnancy in the shortest time possible, since we will avoid transferring unemployed embryos, only healthy at the genetic level embryos will put, with possibilities of success will be transferred into the uterus. This way, um, we prevent patients' psychological and, and physical fatigue, since only the necessary transfer will be carried out. This graphic represents the relationship between maternal aids and the aeoploid rates. This graphic, uh, as, as I tell you, represents the relationship between maternal aids and the aeoploid rate. In other words, the quality of the embryo. It can be observed how until the age of 35, the rate of aeoploid embryo is, is established at uh, 50%. After this age, the percentage starts decreasing, so in a drastic decrease after the 40s. Young women, younger than, than 35, 
have a good ovarian reserve, which means the capacity of the ovary to provide excels. Hence, at this age, this is a high probability, there is a high probability of finding a healthy embryo without any issue. However, up to 35, the ovary, the ovarian reserve starts decreasing as the ovary quality does. It is more common having troubles when trying to get pregnant with a, with a higher, higher miscarriage risk. Finally, we can see that at the age of uh, 33, at, uh, it, it is almost impossible getting natural pregnancy with women's own eggs, okay? So in this one also, uh, um, we can see, we, let's clarify that uh, what we can mean, what uh, we mean with the term of genetical issue. At the, the very beginning of this webinar, I have told you that an uh, unemployed embryo has an abnormal number of chromosomes in a cell being 46, the use of number. For instance, uh, there is some alteration in the chromosome uh, 21, the diagnosis will be uh, Down syndrome, as you know. If it happens in the chromosome, for example, for the um, 18, the, the diagnostic will be uh, Edward syndrome. And when the alteration occurs in the chromosome 13, it will be known uh, as Pato syndrome. There, these three cause cases, for example, are known as treasons, alteration which do not hamper the pregnancy and the birth of a, of a child. It exists other alterations in embryos that in most cases uh, will end up as a miscarriage or, or as a negative pregnancy test. Okay, as shown in this graphic representation, the risk is um, the risk of these issues, sorry, uh, these issues as, uh, as well as of miscarriage is exponentially increased once the woman is 35, 30 or 37 more or less years old. Okay, uh, now let's have a look to a real case. Uh, actually, uh, it is one of the most common causes uh, I see when, when I do a consultation. For example, a 42 years old woman uh, with an anti uh, woman with an antimalarian hormone from now uh, we're going to call AMH, okay? of 0 0.3 and the an, uh, antral follicle count of two, which is a low ovarian reserve. Besides, she has an obstetric history, which includes two miscarriages and five previous tries following assisted reproduction techniques, two through artificial insemination, from now uh, AE, and uh, three through in vitro fertilization, from now uh, we'll call IVF. Finally, finally, in IBF with PGTR test is realized after the ovarian stimulation, five embryos have been obtained. Only two of them end in bla as blastocyst, defined as an uh, uh, undifferentiated embry embryonic cell. After a biopsy, it gives the result that two embryos have genetically abnormalities. One of them has an alteration in chromosome 21, Down syndrome, whereas the other one presents an, an abnormality in chromosome 13, Pato syndrome, uh, as both are aneuploid embryos and embryo transfer is discarded. Uh, as seen in the previous graphic, it is a risk not having healthy embryos after 40 without the PGTA technique. In this case, uh, it is neither a good piece of uh, new for this patient, nor, nor a surprise due to the age of that woman. Nevertheless, the PGTA uh, has allowed her to avoid the third miscarriage in that case. So it has been concluded that a natural pregnancy by their own methods could not be successful. So therefore, egg donation is chosen uh, as the treatment to be followed in that case. A, a fresh donation of an embryo is carried on and it results in a positive pregnancy test and a healthy baby at home uh, nine months uh, after that, later, okay? PGDA, why is it controversial? 
as, as we know, genetic uh, is a delicate ethical issue which causes a, a social debate in, in many countries. Although, uh, although it's a method which allows us to discard those embryos, which are not viable for the transfer, as we, as we, as we have told, um, it has a controversial side. For instance, some legislation, for example, allow this method to choose the sex of the child before the transfer, being, uh, being accused of using the technique as a way to get a perfect baby. And in Spain, this is not allowed. However, uh, we're lucky to have, a, to have a flexible and permissive legislation, legislation which allows us to develop our technologies and fertility treatments. And actually, we use this treatment as a detection of chromosomal issues. The objective of this method is achieving a healthy and successful pregnancy uh, with a healthy child at the end. So according to professional medical indications, PGTA's uh, budget indications are the following, uh, as, you, as you can see. First of all, the mother should have reached an advanced reproductive age as already seen, and it is linked to a drastic increase of uh, unemployed embryos, especially from, from 30, 38 or 40 years old. Hence, if a woman older than 40 wants to have a, an IVF, we will recommend always her the, the, relation, the realization of, um, of a PGTA. Also, a patient who has had a previous failed ABF cycle, so for example, miscarriage also, to discard or confirm genetic issues in the, in the embryos. When it exists an increased risk of um, aneuploidies uh, due, to, due to other reasons, such as, for example, alteration within the karyotype or presence of having received the chemotherapies also. A low ovarian reserve can be linked to a low quality of oocytes, even if the patient has not reached an advanced reproductive age yet. It, is usually, it usually happens to women suffering from endometriosis. Last but not least, uh, it should be taken into account that it could be caused due to a paternal factors also since the quality of the sperm does play a big role in the quality of the embryo, of course, it's 50%. 50%. Their quality is influenced not, not only by the mother's uh, advantage reproduction age, but uh, for the father too. Anyway, its patient is different, so we will study and personalize each treatment based in her characteristics and presence. So how is a biopsy done? The process is uh, divided in two parts. Firstly, its oocyte is going to be fertilized with the sperm, spermatozoa. We let any embryo to develop until they always five or six of life when they are going to form the blastocyst. Once this step is done and the blastocysts are developed, the biopsy takes place. It means that five or six cells are taken, the cells will form the placenta in the future. They will be analyzed through the tests known as PGTA. After that, we have to wait around three weeks to know the results always. At the moment, it's like this, three weeks. We have to wait. That is the reason why the embryos should be frozen uh, just right after the, the biopsy. And they will be kept keep uh, in the laboratory until the result is, is known. Any embryo which ends up uh, being abnormal uh, must be discarded. Okay, and now let's see the process in detail. First of all, an ovarian stimulation should be done to obtain the highest number of oocytes. Once the follicle has reached a, a determined size after, the, after 10, normally 10, 13 days of stimulation, the egg retrieval is programmed. And thirdly, the mature oocytes are going to be fertilized the day uh, they arrive in the laboratory. That is known as in vitro fertilization, and you know, as you know. After the fertilization, they are going to be cultured around five, six days. And their evolution is going to be checked. 
it normally happens uh, that not all of them uh, end up uh, in a blastocyst stage. This moment is when we have the first embryo selection. And however, it can be possible that an embryo which has an aneuploidy can evolve uh, as a good quality embryo. That's why it's so important that selection, genetic selection also. That's why once in the fifth day, the biopsy uh, of any embryos carry out. After it, the pre preservation of the embryos is done. And the BTTA analysis uh, usually takes around three weeks, as, as uh, I told you, yeah. And when those days are over, we uh, will re receive the information from those haploid embryos, which are ready to be transferred into the uterus. And now we start the preparation of, uh, of the endometrium, okay? And finally, once the uterus is prepared, and it's going to take more or less two weeks, and the aeoploid embryos are selected, the transfers take place. We can do uh, of two ways. Uh, we can or wait to the information of the PGTA, PGTA analysis, and then we can prepare the endometrium, or we can prepare the endometrium at the same time we're waiting for that results, okay? From the first visit to the clinic and to the transfer of the embryo to the uterus, it can take two months, more or less. So for patients who live abroad, abroad and cannot stay in Madrid during the whole uh, fertility treatment, three visits is going to, to, to our facility, to be uh, uh, in our facilities. The first consultation to program the treatment. However, it does not need to be on site. Uh, it can also be online one which uh, will avoid one uh, travel to, to, for the patients, okay, to be here. In the second consultation uh, is where the egg retrieval takes place. And during the third one, the, the end of transfer happens. Okay, more or less, I hope it's clear. Then I'm going to show you a timeless video which explain the procedure, okay? As you can see the embryo, a little bit slow. <laughs> As you can see, the embryos uh, are in time lapse incubator. That's why we can see all the procedure. And uh, where we can see the embryonic development and their, and their culture. The uh, first embryo selection, a very important one, takes place uh, from day three to five. As, uh, as only the high quality embryos will be able to develop until they reach um, a blastocyst stage. The development of the, of the weakest embryo is going to stop without reaching the, the fifth day. So we have the first selection there. Okay, here we can see how the embryos developed. Okay, here is the third day, and then here is the fourth day, then we can see that like it's a, a mass, it's not so possible to, to evaluate, but then we can see here a really beautiful blastocyst <laughs> develop, okay? Um, well, here we can see it's the second, uh, it's the second video. Uh, we show you how the biologists do the embryonic biopsy. It's really beautiful. <laughs> Taking five, six cells from the external side of the blastocyst. Okay, this is the external side. This is the blastocyst. Okay, you can see the external side that's going to become the placenta. Okay. Well. Finally, yeah, <laughs> okay, perfect. Okay, so now let's see if a PTTA is worth it. The really, re reliability rate regarding the, the detection of an aneuploidies in, in the analysis, analyzed sample is uh, 98%, however, it should be taken into account that what it is being analyzed is the trophoctoderm, not the cell mass, as we, we, we have seen. In this sense, it is difficult to calculate the reliability rate 
uh, of the test, since in the case of a neoploid embryos, the result can be verified in the mass. But, uh, but that's, that, that's not happened in the upload embryos. Concordance con 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 studies among the internal cell mass and the trophocytoderm have found similarities over 95% while not selection studies have demonstrated that the negative predictive value of the PGDA is higher than 95%. In other words, that the 95% of us are neoploid diagnosed embryos do not implant. Many patients ask us if the biopsy damaged the embryo. As seen in the, in the video, uh, we have seen before, um, after the, uh, before, <laughs> Um, uh, as the nucleus future baby is not manipulated. There is no risk of uh, damaging the genetic of the future fetus because the trophoctoderm is formed by hundreds of cells. Uh, if we take just five of them, there is not going to be damage in, in, in any case. It's really, really, really strange, okay? What we can see here is a result it's a result of, of a PGTA test. That is exactly how the information arrives in the laboratory. Here, um, the damage above, the image above uh, shows an, an euploid embryo, whereas the image uh, below shows a trisomy, this is euploid embryo, this is trisomy in the 13 chromosome. In other words, it's an, an euploid embryo, euploid embryo and an euploid embryo. As we can, this is as we can read the, the result, the biologist. <laughs> so um, in our group, in this uh, slide, what we can see is the results in our group IBF Life. We, we are lucky to have a laboratory in house. And uh, here we can see our own results in uh, 2020 and the clear difference due to the AIDS. Okay here above uh, 40 years old between 36 and, and 40 and then here more than 40 years old is really clearly higher okay to sum up uh, pgta does allow us to increase the pregnancy rates uh, with each embryo transfer especially as we we see from uh, 35 years old why because we are realizing a great embryo selection to discard those ones which will, with a high probability, result in a negative result or a miscarriage. Okay. Well, we have finished. And uh, thank you very much for your attention. And I hope you have learned and clarified your, your doubts about the PGTA test and how it, uh, how it works. And now uh, I will answer the questions you have uh, been asking all the presentation. Okay, I will see. Okay, what is the survival rate on previously frozen blastocyst to PGTA test? So this could be frozen, so refrozen, uh, and then so for a future fit. So. Well, um, the survival rates, uh, yes, because of the PGTA, we can see, we have seen that the, the risk is really low, okay, because of the biopsy, but it's true that we have to freeze the embryos. Okay, the, the, the freeze the embryo, the process of freeze the embryo, the freeze the embryo after that, there's no problem, okay? The, the survival of, uh, the rate of survival really high, really high, 90, 95%, okay? Because normally that embryos are really good quality embryos. Okay, so it's really strange to, to have an embryo that it's that not doesn't survive. Okay. Um, could this test be done if I was to receive uh, an egg donation? I am 44 years old. Okay. Uh, we have seen in a, in one slide, okay, the the, the indication of PGDA. Uh, we haven't talking about the egg donation, but it's true that with the egg donation, we can do uh, the, the PGDA. Um, overall, if, if, if we have a, a paternal factor 
So yes, you can do a BGDA, uh, although with an egg donation, okay? Because the, we, we have seen that the selection is going to be higher. And also with egg donation, we, we see uh, abnormality. We, we see uh, an alkaloid embryos. So um, we can do uh, the best selection with the PGDA. It's not, it's not a really uh, clear indication because so what we have seen is that uh, after, before, um, uh, 35 years old, so and the, the, the donors normally are between 18 and 30, the probability is not so high, but, but of course we can do it. Mm -mm. Okay, we continue with the questions. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Hi, what is your thoughts on mosaic? <laughs> with 35% uh, miscarriage risk. Thank you. Well, um, uh, this is uh, a really good question because it's, uh, it's the eternal debate, uh, the mosaic ones. So um, normally this is a question that, that should be, um, should be, should be, be should be, be thinking of, think about that. The, the laboratory should have to give us the result of that, okay? So if you have a mosaic, it's the laboratory who has to tell us, okay, that mosaic embryo has possibilities or not. It has no possibilities, so we're going to discard that embryo because the number, because the percentage, okay? But if the percentage is 35, I'm, I, I'm, I'm not really sure which is the limit, okay? but. It's not just the person that is only is also the chromosome that are affected. Okay, if you have, for example, one chromosome that it's not so important, so maybe uh, the laboratory is going to tell us that that embryo has possibilities, so we can do the M transfer. But if not, I think that the risk is not necessary. Okay, so it's the laboratory. Who, who has to tell us what to do, <laughs> okay? At the end, you have to decide because you're the patient and it's your embryo, of course, but it's going to be the laboratory uh, that's going to give us the, the information, okay? Okay, so we continue. Mm -mm -mm -mm. How would you prepare the uterus before the PGDA embryo transfer? Thanks. Okay, we have two options. Okay, normally, uh, if it's a PGDA with the own eggs, okay, we're going to do the egg retrieval, and after that, uh, your your period is going to arrive uh, uh, after a week, more or less. It's going to arrive between ten days, uh, seven days, ten days. Okay, your period is going to arrive. So we have two options. Um, as I told you, we have two options. We can start with that period without the information of, uh, of the embryos. We start or with a natural cycle. So it's going to depend on your, your follicle, your cycle, or with that substitutive hormone therapy. So uh, we have to give you estrogen and then progesterone, okay? And then we will, we will fix a date to the embryo transfer according to the results of the PGDA. We have normal embryos, so we will do the embryo transfer five days after the starting of the, the start of the progesterone, okay? So we have two options, natural cycle, substitutive cycle, and we can wait till we have the results or we can do during, we're waiting for the results, okay? Normally we did substitutive because it's going to be really easy to fix a date, okay? If not, we have to depend on your ovulation. If I am 44 years old and receive an egg donation, is there still a high chance of miscarriage or the egg not implanting? Not implanting. Could this test assist uh, with this? Mm. Okay, if it's an egg donation, it's not your own eggs because you are 44, always we're going to advise you to do the PGTA uh, if you want to do with your own eggs. Uh, 
if you are 44 and you're going to do an egg donation, it's not going to depend on your age, okay? If you have, I don't know, problems of coagulation or immunology or the history of endometriosis or adenomyosis, of course, all of that is going to affect, but it's not going to depend on the age, okay? It's going to depend on other factors. So if you're going to do an egg donation uh, and you are going to do a PGDA, no, the age is not going to be a problem. I think that I, I have answered your your question. Mm. Okay. How close are we to using the spent culture media instead of using biopsy cells? Uh, obviously, it's much less invasive. Yes, it, it's it's a good question, and seems more desirable, but still experimental. Exactly. Do you think it could be soon? Exactly. Uh, maybe uh, because we have talking about that because it's exactly uh, still an experimental. So uh, now, okay, there are a lot of studies that compare the results between PGDA, normal PGDA, with cells of the embryo, and cells that we can find in the culture media, okay? Because it's obviously less invasive. It could be perfect, it could be mm, marvelous, but I think that it's going to be soon, yes, but the results uh, still are not clear, okay? So when the result uh, will be clear, I think that yes, of course, it, it, it will be the, the, the method to choose is going to be less invasive. Yes, I think it's going to be soon, but at the moment it's not so clear. Okay, how to improve implantation of transferable PGDA checked embryos? Well, if Yes, the most important thing that we, we have seen is to check that the quality on the embryo is good. So if we have to, done the PGDA, we have seen that the embryo is normal. Okay, but we have not 100% with that, with that technique. Yes, the, we, we have uh, at least uh, 50, 60, 70% with each embryo transfer because we have uh, discarded uh, this question, our nail bodies. But it's true that there, there, is, there are still questions that we, we, can, we can't know. And uh, there are questions that we, we can study, okay? Normally, we can improve that. Um, for example, checking the window implantation, okay, of the M endometrium. Uh, also, we can check the problems in the coagulation, problems with immunology, okay? Uh, we have several tests that we can check uh, before the, the embryo transfer to improve the implantation, of course, of course. Um, does a Spain test for endometriosis before any treatment? If possible, how good does it affect pregnancy? This is a really big question. The answer is going to be <laughs> really big. So we have to, to, to talk about endometriosis in another, in another time, okay? But I can tell you that, of course, endometriosis is, can, be, can be diagnosed, diagnosed before the, the, the treatment, any treatment, normally with an ultrasound, normally with an R, RMA. Normally, uh, if, it, if it's difficult because you have no symptoms, for example, because if you have symptoms and normally it's pain during the cycle, during the, the menstruations, so normally it's really easy to do diagnosis, to do the diagnosis. But if not, normally we, during the ultrasound, during the cycle, we can see uh, thyst or several signs of endometriosis, okay? Endometriosis, um, the, the diagnosis is important, yes, because we're, what we're going to see is that the, the quality of the eggs is going to decrease. Okay, it's going to be lower always because of the endometriosis. Uh, it's interesting because of that, but we have no treatment, specific treatment for the endometriosis. 
So yes, it's going to affect the pregnancy also with the PGDA, okay? Okay, I'll continue with the questions. Let me see if I have answered all the questions here. Mm. Yes, it's answer. Okay, let's see. Okay, okay. Mm -mm. Well, I'm going to try, yes, to answer the question as it's going that, that are of that uh, term, okay, of BGDA. Mm -hmm. What would happen if the test you are discussing came back with a problem? I, I don't understand which kind of test do you mean? Do you mean the PGTA? Um, do you mean the PGTA? Uh, it could happen, okay, that uh, we have done the, the biopsy of imagine four embryos, and we have three embryos with the results, an aeoploid or aeoploid, and we can happen, it, 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 it could happen to have um, a not clear result, okay, because uh, it has, there is a problem with the technique during the development of the analyze. Uh, it could happen something, okay? So sometimes it's really strange, but sometimes it could happen to re-biopsy. Re we have to re-biopsy the embryo. Yes, that's not a really big problem and it's not so common. Okay. Hi, if someone has endometriosis, endo, I mean, I think it is endometriosis, and the few, several fibroids on age of 44, how it affects uh, the egg reserve? Also, how can I check my egg reserve things? So, uh, yes, because of the age, the ovarian reserve is going to be low because 44 is. Uh, Normally, with that aid, we, we have seen that the quality of the is going to be lower and also the ovarian. So the, the fibroids, it's not a problem in that case, in the case of the quality of the eggs. It's going to be a problem maybe uh, for the embryo transfer. It's going to depend on where is the fibroid and, uh, and how many you have. Um, and uh, the endometriosis, yes. The endometriosis is going to affect the quality of the eggs also with the, with the age, okay? In that case, endometriosis with 44 years old, it's uh, the, really, really probably, probable, probable to finish with an egg donation, okay? Oh, well, uh, another question. I am 33 years old and uh, on first IVF appointment, I have 12, um, 12 uh, follicles, okay? In the, the count of the follicles, 12 in total, but an AMH of 0 0.36. This is really strange. How is it possible? Yeah, this is strange. Or the contact of the, of the follicles aren't right, or the AMH is wrong also. So it's not possible. It's not, uh, it's not uh, normal. Um, I'll start my stimulation next Saturday. I have good chances. Well, it's going to depend if you are, it's going to depend on a lot of things, okay? Uh, sperm, um, how long is your infertility history? Uh, because, because of your age, it's, um, it's a really good age, 33, because normally you have a good ovarian reserve, a good quality, because the quality is not possible to study. Okay, so we can study, yes, the quantity of the eggs with the AMH and the ultrasound, but it's not possible to know the quality. It's always that, I always explain in consultation, consultation because it's really it's really hard because we can we can know which is going to be the real probability of each patient as we start the stimulation and we have to go step by step. Uh, you have to to your ovary always ha, have to respond to the uh, medication. Then we have to see 
if the quality of the uh, of the oil sites are good, then the fertilization, then the, the evolution of the embryos. Okay, so it's difficult to to tell you which is your probability, but uh, if you have twelve follicles and you you have thirty three probably you are going to go, to have a good chance and you have no, you have no problems of endometriosis or another problems i think that it's it's not a it's good you, you are going to have a a, good ch a chance a good chance mm -mm -mm. if we have an egg donor and the pgda test so abnormalities what would happen then? Could we need a new egg donor? Uh, okay, so uh, I have seen, okay, situations where we have double donation, okay, so sperm donor and uh, egg donor, and uh, we have 50 or more percent of the embryos abnormal. Why? because uh, the zero percent of abnormalities is impossible. So uh, obviously we are going to do the PGTA, yes, to discard that situation because we can have six marvelous, uh, really beautiful blastocysts, but if we haven't seen the, the, the genetic abnormalities or normalities, it's not possible to do a perfect selection. Okay, so no, I think that it's not necessary to change the donor also if it's a sperm of your husband, so your partner. So maybe what we have to see, it's more common to have problems with the sperm of the husband and sperm donation, for example, always. So the most common thing is to have one, two embryos abnormal if it's an egg donation uh, in five, six embryos analyzed. So, okay. So this is the, the normal rate. So you have more than third part abnormal. What we have to, to study uh, more is, is, the, is the sperm, okay, in that case. It could be also the donor, yes, but it's normally the most common thing is a problem with the sperm, okay. Well, we continue with the questions. Mm -mm. If women only have fully an aneuploid or mosaic embryos, do you allow them to transfer them? As long as it's not an aneuploid compatible with life. Example, two monosomy, two, two monosomy. Why not try to transfer it? It probably will not implant, but worth a try. Because sometimes trophic to themselves do not represent inner cell mass or self-correction. Exactly. This is a the eternal question. If the, the external cells are going to be like this always, or we can we can the embryo can repair that. Or maybe an error in the test. Do you recommend women transfer if no employee embryos? Well, there are a lot of studies of that because if not, it's not ethical to discard that embryo. So yes, if you have a no a neoploid embryos, yes, I recommend you. I recommend you to uh, discard that embryos always. What what would happen if we embryo transfer uh, abnormal embryos? most common thing to have a negative test or a miscarriage. This is the most common. Okay. Uh, that's it. So I recommend you to discard that embryo. Yes, because the studies tell us that um, that normally is really, really, yes, uh, the probability is really high to have a test, a negative test, really have um, almost 100% or a uh, miscarriage. So we do that just to select better. Okay, so yeah. Mm -mm -mm. Have you got examples of 33, 33 years old women who managed to have a good number of normal healthy eggs, not eggs, always embryos, okay? Because the eggs is not possible to, 
to study, despite the bad statistics. How many blastocysts do I need at the age of 32, 33 to have two, three genetically healthy embryos? Okay, this is a really interesting question because this is a statistic, okay? Because statistics are mathematics and medicine is not mathematics, but we, we need the statistics to explain uh, patients, okay? So, um, 33 years old, it's uh, normally the probability to find a normal egg is really, really low. Uh, so it's going to depend always, the rate of succeed in that patient is going to depend on the, on the, on the ovarian reserve, okay? So normally, when I have a patient with 43, but a normal ovarian reserve and not a long history of infertility normally, I, um, I advise to continue or to try with your with the, the own eggs, okay? And how many eggs do uh, does she need to have uh, to have a rate of succeed of uh, fifty percent? But for me, that's a good rate of succeed. So with thirty three, there are a lot of studies, okay? More or less, uh, you need 20, 25 eggs to have a fifty percent rate of succeed, okay? So with that, you have you can have an idea. If you have a, a low ovarian reserve uh, with each treatment, treatment you have five x, three x, two x. So you are going to need a lot of cycles to have a fifty percent rate of succeed. Okay, that means that maybe uh, you need I don't know with embryos. Normally, I I work with the number of of x. But for example, to have two, three genetically healthy embryos, you need at least 10, 10 embryos. Okay, more or less or more. But it, it is yes, lack. Because I have patients, of course, of 44, 43, that uh, accumulate embryos to find one. And then uh, we accumulate maybe three, four embryos and we can find one normal. Yes, of course we have. But uh, normally, uh, it's really hard to, to get one embryo normal. This is the, we need more or less, the statistical tell us that we need more or less between 25, 28 X with that age to have one, not one embryo normal, sorry, to have a 50, yeah, more or less it's the one embryo normal because it's a 50% of succeed that is going to be with each, uh, more or less with each embryo transfer, okay? So I think that it's clear. <laughs> Quite difficult to explain. Um, can you use some supplements such as uh, Q10 by both mother and father improve the embryo quality and BGTA, BGTA results? Well, uh, for the mother, um, uh, we have no a lot of uh, a lot of medication. No, we have no medication to improve the quality of the eggs. Yes, we have. Um, Yes, for the polyhistic syndrome, and normally are young women. So, no, the vitamins are not going to improve the quality of the eggs. Okay, but yes, for the father, if the problem is the quality of the sperm, or, or the quality of the sperm not so good, it's quite um, abnormal. So normally we advise yes to, to take um, fertility vitamins. Okay, and normally improves. And normally improves. Yes. But also, if the problem is also the age of the, of the, of the father, then normally uh, since 45 years old, we can see also abnormalities because of due to the age of the father. No, so in that case, the, the vitamins uh, are not going to, to help. Well, so we arrived to the finish of our webinar i hope uh, i hope it, uh, it has been interesting for you and if you have more questions okay yes you, you can just fix an appointment because uh, as we can see uh, here <laughs> next free online consultation will be the weekend of uh, 23rd and 24th of april so we can see there or we can you can send an email with uh, with uh, your questions okay so bye-bye, have a good evening.